What's cooler than a garage? A smart garage. So in this episode, I'm gonna make some upgrades to my space, give me some control, a bit more security, and you know, just make it cooler. Right now, when I arrive at the garage, I have to push a button on a little key fob to bring up the roller shutter, and then duck under the door as fast as possible and turn off the alarm because I can't turn it off from the outside. Um, I've already replaced the crappy old roller shutter controller for a nice shiny new one. Somehow, I want to get control of that from my phone so that I can both disarm the alarm and open the door from outside, but of course stop anybody else doing it at the same time. Now the alarm isn't very sophisticated, it's an old Texacom beastie. Um, I also want to be able to monitor at some point how much power's in the meter um, because I, it's a prepay meter and if it runs out I can't open the roller shutters without hacking the door, which I've had to do before. Finally, I'd like to make entertainment a bit easier to get. I'd like to be able to stream some radio, listen some tunes while I'm in here, turn it on and off when I'm doing videos, ideally with voice control. The starting point for doing all this, first of all, connectivity. I've got a 4G uh, router here, um, picked it up off eBay for about 40 quid, I think. I've got a, a Google Home that I've had hanging around that I wasn't using at home. May or may not use that, we shall see, may, may, maybe go uh, Alexa instead. Sorry if I've just triggered your thing. Uh, voice Assistant, and then we have Home Assistant Blue. Uh, so I've just swapped my Home Assistant instance at home uh, from running on this to running on an old uh, QNAP NAS box, so this was spare. I've actually got the new Home Assistant Yellow coming as well. But this will do for in here absolutely fine. It's an Odroid N2 Plus, I think, on the inside. Um, hoping I find a way to wall mount it, might need to 3D print some parts. Um, but yeah, that is going to be the core of my setup for now. To make mounting everything easier, I've just stuck this slab of ply up, just leftover scrap, uh, next to the fuse board and everything next to the alarm, so I can tie into everything nice and easy. I've got access to power. That's some power sorted. Using separate drill and driver saves so much time. I know it's a simple thing, but if you can splash out on having a separate driver, it cuts the time of these jobs dramatically. Using the dirty finger method to make a template for mounting this TP-Link router. No, it's nothing sexual. Literally rub your hand on the floor, rub your hand on the back, and it immediately outlines the two mounting points. I'm going to stick the router at the top uh, and then work out what else goes in the middle. It's all a bit Heath Robinson. But it's there, straighten those up. And um, just some angle brackets and some cable ties to hold the home assistant box there. Router's nice and secure. And um, I've put it with all the ports facing down so we can just sort of loop things around. Ideally, we'd have the aerials pointing upwards, but that's just not the way it's laid out. So, time to get some power in here and hook these things up. This is where we're at. Roots are so shiny with the uh, protective plastic removed that you can see me. Hello. Power and Ethernet going to our home assistant box. Power to our router. And I've just thrown a, uh, in this case, gift gap SIM card I had lying around in there. Um, no idea how old it is, whether it'll work, but we can give it a try. And there we go. Blinky lights. SIM seems to have activated okay. Um, you can't really see the lights in the home system box, but there is some activity going on in there. You can just about see a little red light, maybe. So that's all on. It's time to log in and do some boring setting up. Brought an old laptop with Ubuntu on it into the, off into the office, into the shed to play with. And as you can see, it's all working. We have internet, albeit 3G. I think it was a 3G SIM that I put in because it was so old. Um, I shall have to get a 4G SIM. Uh, and swap it out, I think, uh, or see if GIFGAF will send me a 4G SIM on the same contract. Um, but it's working, internet is ticked, and wired clients, you can see Home Assistant is connected uh, down here. So now we can start to um, set up Home Assistant. So there we go, we have a completely blank instance of Home Assistant. I say completely blank, it's actually got a few things carried over from my old instance, so I'm gonna to have to delete a few things. But I did do some preliminary setting up 
uh, of bits for the workshop at home. So I've carried some things across. Uh, one thing I have done is added in the, um, I've set up a new account with Nabu Casa um, to give me remote access. That will cost me some money. There are cheaper ways to do it. It's gonna cost me about 65 pounds a year, but it makes things really, really easy. Uh, and I like easy. Um, so maybe down the line, I'll find a cheap way, but I'm very happy with the Nabu Casa service for my home. Um, instance of home assistant so i'm going to do it that way for now um, in the middle of setting up um, google home got just done a factory reset on my google home there we go um, so i'll have voice control in a minute Welcome to google uh, and then we can start to add started. devices first device to go in is the door shutter controller node mcu esp8266 on a well, Node MCU base, ESP8266 in there. So giving us Wi-Fi control, a, um, hello, that's only my hand you can see there. And um, that it, hidden under all that hot glue is a level shifter in the middle of all those cables. Uh, and then it's some five volt relays to do the switching. Um, just using uh, ESP Home Web to install some software on that. And then we can plug it into the uh, shutter controller uh, and see if it works. So close yet so far I'm running out of time but when I click that button over there I don't know if you can see relays are firing I need to set up a momentary action for them in the ESP home code so that the momentary buttons not quite firing the um, shutter yet because I think I've probably got a bad connection of bad earth but I can sort that out just not today so a great start on making my garage smart my shed smart and um, got the broadband in well broadband got the mobile connection in seems to be relatively nippy actually it's not too bad I don't think it is I think it is running 4g rather than 3g so that's great and um, got the remote control for the uh, shutter semi-installed got home assistant installed and cleaned up slightly got remote uh, access set up uh, and got the voice control set up in the next episode i'll get that roller shutter control sorted uh, and start hacking the alarm system as well and if i've got the time set up a camera too see you next time